It's great to have you here on the Clark Howard Show. Our mission is to serve you and empower you with knowledge so you make better financial decisions in your life. Before we begin today's show, I want to sincerely thank each of you who's taken time to review us on Apple Podcasts or wherever you listen to our podcast. It helps so much for others who might benefit from what we do to find their way to us. Lots of five stars on Apple Podcasts, which is awesome. That really is helpful because then we show up more, I think, for people. So do more people find their way to us through Apple Podcasts than other yes. sources? Yes. Oh, okay. So those of us who are inferior Android users, how do we find our way? Well, there are a million apps you can use. There's a Google Podcast app um, that you, that's the simplest, like Spotify, anywhere where you, um, but people have already found it. They're yeah, they're listening. listening right now. They already found <laughs> so us. I have the clueless one. That, no. Yeah, sorry about that. <laughs> so obviously I stink. No, you don't. And that smell, that odor you smell is something I deserve. And that's why today is my favorite day of the podcast each week. Because it's when we do our Clark Stink segment, and you get to hear many of the ways that your fellow listener feels or viewer feels I'm stinking it up. And later, as the weather starts to chill in a lot of places in the country, the cost of heating goes way up, unless you wear a ski park indoors, right? And so... I'm going to talk about how simple it is as we approach colder weather to lower those bills. And by the way, a lot of things you do that lower them in the winter also help you if it's hot where you are or when it gets hot again. But without further ado, it is time for Clark Stinks. All right. What I, you got? I forgive you for buying the outdated talking point statistics that extended warranties are a bad deal. If auto warranties were such a bad deal for consumers and such a cash cow for providers, why don't the major auto insurance companies offer any? There is a chance you will get into an auto accident, yet you have insurance. It is guaranteed your automobile will break down, yet you don't have a breakdown insurance. Who's getting suckered by whom, Vern? Vern, thank you. All right, so auto insurance is about uh, not just the loss of your vehicle, which is the small money. It's about the liability risk that you cause if you're found at fault in an accident or partially at fault in an accident, someone else is hurt, and they see that billboard and they call that lawyer and you get eaten up. I mean, th that's why auto insurance is not really specifically about the vehicle itself. Although if you have a loan, the lender will require that you have uh, coverage on the vehicle that you have bought and you have a loan against. Extended warranties on vehicles, the math is not any better typically on those than it is on when they tell you to protect your investment buying a TV and you should buy the terrible extended warranty on it too. The reason I'm neutral on car warranties is even though the math is awful, there are a lot of people who don't have the money to pay for a major repair if one comes up. If your TV stops working, it doesn't keep you from going to work. If your vehicle stops working, you may not be able to get to work. That's why the stakes are higher, and I'm neutral on the vehicle warranties. But remember this rule, never buy any warranty other than one from the manufacturer of the brand you're buying itself. Whether you buy it from the dealer you're doing business with or another dealer, manufacturers own only. While Clark doesn't really stink for this, I do want to raise awareness of the continued security problems of WISE cameras. Most recently, they had an incident where customers could see the video of other customers through the web portal. Very little communication went out about this, and details are scarce. The most recent incident caused the New York Times to pull all recommendations of the WISE products until they make meaningful changes to improve security. While the price is right with them, the security is invaluable. Chris. Chris, thank you for this, and... Uh, it is a concern. Of course, I've read the stories about the security breaches involving the WISE cams. And this is the real test for any company. 
because any company could have a problem of some kind. It's how do you deal with that problem? And more important, ultimately, how do you communicate to and with your customers? And Wise is not being very wise right now on that score. Clark, you stink worse than when my French poodle got sprayed by a skunk. Enough Ooh. about only using a carry-on. You are a guy. I'm more high maintenance. I'm a more high maintenance female that wants lots of wardrobe options on vacation. I have way more clothes than what I want to bring. That I want to bring than you are. I am sure. Heels, sandals, and shoes alone. I can't get away with a carry-on holding a couple of black polos and Dockers. I need choices. I need my makeup and blow dryers and more. Wardrobe changes are popular with us. It's impossible for us to edit to, to edit to a carry on. Sorry, Clark, Jennifer. So, Jennifer, first of all, why you think I'd spend as much money as Dockers cost is just absolutely crazy. But second, <laughs> my wife dresses about as fashionably as any woman you will ever see she does she's incredible taste beautiful and, clothes and she is such an intense advocate for carry on you can't imagine uh because it just causes so many problems when you check a bag you have a flight problem you're who knows what's going to happen about you being able to change your flight whatever because you don't have your luggage with you you have to sit there and watch that carousel go round and round and round a lot of times waiting for the bag so it is a personal choice on my part that to simplify my life and to avoid a lot of oops that i never ever check a bag in your case if you need that wardrobe with you then who am i to say and if you want to check a bag and deal with the potential problems that could occur just know that people are going to enjoy seeing those continual changes in outfits over the course of your vacation. Clark really isn't that smelly. He just missed the opportunity to let everyone know that Fidelity's credit card now charges no foreign transaction fees on purchases or ATM transactions, Bill. Bill didn't know that they had gone to the good side on that, and we will make sure we have that updated. It is updated already. Or we have that updated was probably, on yeah, Clark. When that com. happened, we updated okay. it, yep. Recently, a listener wrote in to say that his discounted razor handle left him with a stash of useless blades. I thought the same thing had happened to me when my old bundle gave out, handle gave out after years of use, leaving me with a substantial cache of them. However, I noticed the blade on a, an Equate disposable I had in hand for travel looked awfully similar. After I used up that blade, I was able to separate the handle from the blade and snap on one of my other blades from my old handle. The disposable is a knockoff of different, a different brand than the original handle, so you never know what combination might work out, Neva. Okay, that's brilliant. So the Equate brand is Walmart's private label, and gosh, it worked. And you didn't lose all the value of those blades. Clark stinks no way. I've had admiration for his humble self, this humble selfless man who dedicates his precious time serving the public and helping them manage their money. Having said that, on a recent episode, you answered a question about whether to hold on to restricted stock units. I would encourage a different way of looking at them. I was fortunate to receive quite a few RSU grants over the years I worked at a large technology company. When the RSUs vested, the company would withhold a number of them to, to cover an estimate of the income taxes that would be owed. At that point, if I sold them, I would receive immediate cash with no further taxes owed. If I held them, then I would pay capital gains on how much they increased in value from that day and that they vested. So here's a useful way to think about them. If you received a cash bonus from your company, would you use it to buy company shares? The general answer to that question should be no. no. And so I always sold any RSUs I received as soon as possible and immediately invested the proceeds into a low cost index fund. Cheers, Niall. Niall, I appreciate that because a number of people at tech companies have gotten burned where they held onto their restricted stock at the point that it was no longer restricted and they could sell it. And then the stock evaporated, you know, the company hit bad earnings or the stock value cratered and then they were uh, upside down having paid a lot of tax and losing money at the same time so that is good advice are you serious right now as an educator i'll say this as politically correct as i possibly can 
Maybe you didn't mean it as it sounded, but you recently praised billboards with expletives about the president and how wonderful it was to live in a country where we we're able, free to have this type of opportunity. This isn't an opportunity. It is an embarrassment. This is why our young people in this country think it's acceptable to say bleep you and other colorful words to each other as well as adults. We know better as adults. We need to do better and remember that we live by example for our youth who learn by example. Deb. Deb, thank you. I don't remember the context. What was that about? I don't remember how it came up, but I do remember you saying that you recently drove by and you think, you know, we're free to talk, to say things like about yeah. people. Yeah, uh, on the, the F-bomb being used everywhere, uh, I was talking to somebody who was at a, uh, oh, it was my son, who was at a soccer game and a three-year-old, three, four-year-old, Drop the f bomb about the other team, mm. and all these people around the kid laughed, and the dad thought it was funny, and so the coarseness of language today obviously is atrocious. And as far as uh, some of the billboards you see about uh, President Biden, I find the the language and tone of them disgusting and despicable. I do also think it's important that we have one of our cornerstones of our society is freedom of speech. Clark, I still can't get the stench out of my house from several episodes ago. It sounded as if you were siding with the poor retailers tacking on the credit card fees. The company I work with does e-commerce, and we absorb these absurd fees. It's a cost of doing business. Besides, the speedier shipping costs we are transparent on what what you will pay. I think it's a terrible move luring you along and smacking a massive junk fee at the end. I have some decent rewards cards, but most of the time I'm getting 1% cash back and some businesses are charging 4% to 5%. I know the solution is a payment system like Bitcoin that kicks the banks out of the equation, but sadly widespread adoption has been difficult. Don't worry about the little retailers. Continue fighting for us consumers. Kevin. Kevin, thank you. Um, there's a lot involved here. And, you know, my TV's back on because it's NFL season. And I'm seeing ad after ad for this uh, AstroTurf campaign trying to terrify consumers that, that legislation is trying to take away their rewards on credit cards. What it's actually trying to do is create a free and open market for merchants accepting uh, credit cards and other payment forms of payment and allow them to shop in the open marketplace instead of being forced into the Visa MasterCard cartel. And that's why our merchant fees are much higher than anywhere else in the world. So I think it should be a free market environment instead of a cartel, even though I benefit so much from the reward cards. Retailers, and you think about small businesses, what a burden those credit card merchant processing fees are to a very small business. The big chains, they can absorb it and handle it, and they do, and they build it in their price somehow. But small businesses aren't big enough and strong enough to do that. And so charging you extra to uh, cover the Visa MasterCard cartel fees, to me, is perfectly reasonable. Clark? repeated a falsehood I have heard before about Facebook and Instagram spying via constantly listening to audio. This does not happen, especially on an iPhone where despite this company's general scumminess, I do not use their products, it would be virtually impossible to constantly record audio without you giving microphone permission to the app. Even if you do give permission, anytime it's recording, iOS by design always has a green light on the status bar that is controlled by the operating system and can't be bypassed by the app. No green light, it is not recording you. This is a common urban legend, but it's just not true. Android versions, at least in recent versions, have similar indicators for microphone use. Finally, with all the employees that Facebook and Instagram has, I've never once even heard from any current, former, disgruntled, etc. employee of the company that any technology of this sort is in use, despite the fact that it would be a fantastic lawsuit and news story fodder. Again, not a fan, just someone in the tech software field who can't stand hearing urban legends and conspiracy theories repeated as if they were fact to a wide audience. Scott. Scott, thank you for this. Uh, all right, so it was my wife's experiment. And it was an assumption on our part. She's iPhone. She has the settings 
for Instagram. She doesn't use Facebook, but she uses Instagram. Set where they're not supposed to um, share her information. But somehow, and she's done this experiment several times, she'll just randomly start talking about something. She'll say, watch this. She'll start talking about who knows what. And then within hours, ads for whatever it is start showing up on her iPhone. Do you have a Google Home address or, I mean, home device or a, um, a, an Apple Echo or whatever? We, like? we have a uh, Google Home device, but it's not in our living room. Okay, because sometimes I wonder, like, I'm probably doing another urban legend, but I know those do have to always listen for, hey, Google and things like that, which I probably should like just said. like an Amazon. yeah. So they listen to Alexa, you. They are always you. listening because they'll oh, hear something. I just said something. that word. Yeah. Sorry to Sorry. anybody with an Amazon device. I said that word. Um, but, you know, your data is, I mean, I'm accusing them of selling it, but I know they do to serve you ads and stuff. Like Google will look at what you're watching, look at what you're doing. So, you Scott, get served ads you on work the in the technology field. Hearing what we just said now and our confusion about it. I probably made him more mad. Sorry. No, no, Scott. I mean... I'd love your theory on why this is happening to my wife and why these ads are showing up on her phone at various random sites after she just throws out some UFO topic, whatever it is. And is it, I would ask if they're showing up too on her computer browsers. Like in the, when she's going to websites in the browsers, the same ads following you? Because usually it's like cookies and they're... All right, I'll ask her. Okay. I've never thought I would have a reason to get out of my air freshener, but today I was so deeply disappointed in your discussion of dental tourism. I got so excited when I heard you mention you would be discussing it. I couldn't wait to mow the lawn and listen to what you had to say. I'm so disappointed in your lack of information on the subject. Other than if you're poor, go to Mexico. It's better than nothing. Come on. Can you spend some time and actually provide some ways we can know which providers are good or bad? Maybe how we can investigate the ones that are not disgusting. I'm not destitute, but due to the fact that we were pretty poor growing up, I didn't get the dental care I should have. I now need several implants to fix some things. My dental insurance only covers $5,000 in a lifetime. And so here in the U.S., that is one implant. In Cancun, it would cover all of, all of that in flights and a nice resort to recover in. I've been looking at Cancun for dental work, and it seems like there are a few really high quality and reputable groups, but how do I know? And by the way, I absolutely love your heart. I am a rabbi and began a thing called the Rabbi Stinks because of you, Carl. Well, Rabbi Carl, thank you, and Lashana Tova to you. Um, so with medical, we have a thing on Clark.com how you can vet a medical provider overseas. There is no equivalent for dental care. And I'm certainly not in any way, uh, I, I know nothing about dentistry other than sitting in the chair and hearing the saw go on, whatever that noise is. Mm. Sounds like a drill. Like a, yeah, drill, a it's chainsaw, a drill saw. whatever. <laughs> anyway, um, so that's why all I could really say is that this is something that has become a big thing because so many people could not afford the dental care costs in the United States. The country that has the longest standing reputation for high quality, affordable dental care is Costa Rica in the Western Hemisphere. And, the, and in Europe, in the country of Hungary, there's a long tradition of people from Western Europe traveling to Hungary for dental care. The Mexican angle was one that I was not familiar with until I read about it. That people are going to these border communities uh, in sight of the U.S. border for medical, for dental care. So as far as the quality, I have no way of giving you a roadmap to that. And I looked for one, and I couldn't find one for the same kind of um, hands-off impartial review of dental practice like there is for traditional medical care overseas. So that's why I left you frustrated. And I'm frustrated that I could tell you that there are these cheaper ways to do it, but I don't know how to vet the quality. And maybe somebody will see a marketplace need and will come up with a way to do that 
But to my knowledge to this point, there's not one for dental care. So I stink and that problem stinks. Uh, coming up ahead, we're moving into the time of year that in a lot of places, there's starting to be a little chill in the air. You might start needing a sweater or a sweatshirt, and eventually you're gonna need a jacket or whatever. And then in turn, the heating bills start going up. And just as I would tell you, approaching summer, there are things you can do. There are also things you can do as cold weather approaches. That's coming up. We are so lucky in the United States that we are one of the world's largest producers of energy. Well, actually, by several measurements, we are the world's largest producer of energy. And as a result, even at a time that gas prices are going up, our prices are generally lower than elsewhere in the developed world because we are such a prolific producer of traditional energies. Uh, natural gas has become the most important energy supply we have in the United States for homes and offices and things like that. And natural gas now is a huge source of energy for electricity. And so the price is actually more favorable even in a more expensive year than it is elsewhere. But that doesn't help you a lot when the bill comes in and it's so expensive. I want to make it clear you are not a prisoner to what that heating bill is. There are things you can do is depending on where you live in the country and how cold winter is, there are things you can do that will make a meaningful difference in what that bill is. And the funny thing is, in places with more mild winters, the impact you can have is really great because the improvements you do can really reduce the total amount of energy for heating your home needs. And start with the windows. It doesn't mean replacing your windows. I can't believe how often people think, oh, my heating bill is too high or my cooling bill is too high. I'm going to go buy all new windows for my home. Uh-uh. There are improvements you can do with what you already got, with seeing that you've properly insulated and weather stripped around doors and windows. Caulk, weather strip. Really simple. Takes elbow grease. You can do it yourself. Doesn't cost a lot. New windows cost a lot. And it is true that you could put significant additional demand on your bill for heating or cooling because you don't have good windows. But the cost of the windows, the payback over time is way too great. So around doors and windows, caulk and weather strip. And the one of the greatest losses in a home is really inexpensive to fix is something we don't see. And if you're in a home with an attic, that attic is where you're having enormous heat transfer because most of us have pitiful amounts of insulation in the attic. And today, the ability to retrofit with various ultra-efficient forms of insulation that will pay back in typically a season and then save you money after that for years and years to come. I mean, this is cheap money for big reward. And you know my obsession with the digital thermostats, the smart thermostats, how much they can reduce your heating consumption. Then next spring, when we move to warmer weather, how it can reduce your cooling expense as well. And having old heating and air conditioning units, when their time is done, that's when you can have big impact. And something not about heating and cooling, but about your bill. What temperature do you have your water heater set at? Way too often, we have the water heater too high. And so we're heating water that no one's using at the time. All these 
steps are all low dollar steps. But these low dollar steps can have big impact for your wallet. And remember, so many of these things you can do yourself. Krista? Okay, okay David in California says, what does Clark think about solar power retrofits for homes? Is it big, sa would I have big savings or would it be a big bust? Concerns, they look ugly, could they make you sick? And are they made in China? If it's a good idea, should you buy with financing, lease, or do a combination thereof? Okay, so first of all, I'm a believer in solar before it actually worked out financially. I just believed in it so much. I did it, uh, gosh, more than 25 years ago, I guess, first time. Um, I've done, over the years where we've moved and stuff, I've done it four different times. Rooftop solar, three times, one time with a big yard, I did a uh, solar farm where it was on a hillside that was much cheaper to install than having it on the roof and much easier to maintain. Solar pays off in so much of the country. There are tax credits available that even accelerate that payoff. Are solar panels ugly? Yeah, probably. And that's why the new GAF system, copying what Tesla came up with, where it's solar shingles, may be something to look at. The payback takes longer, but it looks like a regular roof. Don't believe any of the claims from any of the solar companies about how it will have already paid for itself by the time the last installer leaves your house. It takes years for solar to pay back, but it's a pretty decent return in most places. You gotta shop around. Make sure you're shopping for the same size system. Enormous differences in price from one company to another. When should you lease a solar system? Never, never. You're creating a liability and a hassle. You buy solar. Even if you have to finance it, you buy it, you own it, it's part of the house. This one's from Edward in Georgia. You frequently talk about 529 plans. I have a 10-month-old daughter. Congratulations. And I, and I opened up a 529 plan with Charles Schwab. Is the Schwab plan a good one, or should I go directly to the state plans that you discuss in your show? The Schwab plan is okay. Um, it's not one of my favorites, because the costs uh, can be pretty high on the Schwab plan. You know, you have the investment choices in the plan and they go up to, uh, I think as high as eight tenths of 1%. If you look at my 529 plan guide at clark.com slash 529, you'll see my favorite plans have costs that are as little as one fifth of 1% or less. So Schwab is... A decent plan, not a great plan. And Edwards in Georgia, which is one of the states where you get a tax deduction too. Yeah, and Georgia has a good 529 plan. If you look at my 529 plan guide, and you'll see what, uh, how to click right on it to do the plan in Georgia. Kevin in Virginia says, hello, Clark. I've been listening to you for quite some time now every day on my hour-long commute to work. I share your Hour. advice and knowledge with my family members. I speak of you as if you were a family friend, and you are. Oh, thank I would you. like to take a cruise, but I'm looking for where to find deals as a solo cruiser. Please advise me on where I can get the best bang for my buck, as I'm tired of seeing all my Facebook friends have fun and adventures from their cruise vacation, and I'm ready to take the leap. So if you, uh, Kevin, you like a party environment, um, Virgin Cruises offers uh, a really nice setup for an individual cruise passenger. Norwegian, NCL, is the company that has done the most over the years having cabins that are designed for one person. So instead of having to pay the huge single supplement that most cruise lines charge with NCL you're in a cabin specifically designed for a single traveler and they don't rip you off the cabins are really small really small 
but they are designed to hold the cost down for you as a single individual going on a cruise. And Kevin, they also have it designed where they do events to bring together the other single travelers on the cruise, especially early in the cruise, so that you meet other people on the trip. And I wish that more cruise lines would design space on their ships to have single cabin, you know, one person cabins that are these very small cabins, but then make cruising more available, more approachable, and more affordable for one individual sailing by himself or herself. What do you think about Kevin contacting a cruise agent? Oh, thank you. I love for you to work with a cruise only agent. Uh, there are agencies that all they do are cruises where you sit down with a very experienced agent, either virtually or even in person. And this is not about buying the lowest cost on a cruise. This is about getting the right match of a ship, itinerary, experience for who you are, your stage of life, your personality, what you enjoy doing. And a very experienced cruise agent is key to making that a good trip. You never want to be in a position like my oldest daughter was once, where she was on a cruise where she had a countdown on her phone to how many hours she had left on that ship. And I know that happened to you once, where you were on a ship you couldn't wait to get off of, oh, Krista. Oh, yeah, for sure. I'm not a huge fan of cruising, but my family members are not. Oh, my son loves it, but everyone else is, does not want to go. So your son can go with us. Yeah, he loves it. Yeah, so he can, he can come. We can make him an uh, extra person in the cabin and sleep on the sofa. Yeah. You think he'd want to do that someday? Yeah, I don't know if you would appreciate his late hours and stuff, but that's up to you. You know, I do have a son the same age. <laughs> I'm familiar with that. But anyway, um, I think the expertise of a cruise specialist, not with the cruise line, I mean, an independent travel agency specializes in cruises, is really valuable. Um, don't call one of the 800 number cruise outfits because typically they're only about, oh, we got this deal, this deal, this deal. It's all about price. That's for experienced cruise passengers, you need a cruise specialist who can guide you. And thank you for reminding me to mention that because I job. failed to do so. And I want to thank you so much for being with us today. Remember what we're about, you learning ways to save more and spend less. And don't let anyone ever rip you off. And I hope you have an absolutely wonderful weekend.